What up, PC Master Race? Hey. Yeah, hey, what's up, guys? Sam here. And yes, I'm talking to you. Have you heard about Apple's M1 chip? Have you seen that for once in humanity, we've been collectively able to agree on something as a society and as a people? This is insane. I have not seen more acclaim for Apple's M1 chip than I have. Like, this is like the most highly praised product across the board, I think since I've been alive. Apple's M1 chip in the new MacBook Pro, I have been using this extensively since the day it came out, uh, the MacBook Air and the Mac Mini. It's got like one of the highest single core scores in Macs ever. If not the highest, I think it is the highest. And then multi-core score is not all the way there, but it's really good for an eight core processor. Because what a lot of people I feel like are missing is that like, guys, this is processor one. This is like iPhone. Not not iPhone 3G, not iPhone 10, not iPad Air 7. Like, this is M1. This is where Apple said, hey, we're going to go make our own chips and see what we come up with. And for me, that's not a fault of the M1. Why? Because the M1 is replacing Apple's base chips from Intel. Like, the M1 is here. Now, if Apple had come out and said, hey, the M1 is going in all of our products at once right now, I'd be like, whoa, 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 I'm not actually cool with this because I need more power than the M1 can provide. And that is, I'm so excited for it. That is exactly what Apple is doing next because uh, they're gonna be releasing essentially an M1X variant of the chip and an M2, I think, or maybe we'll even get like an M1Z. Apple introduced the Z component when updating some graphics on the iPad Pro earlier in 2020. So this article today that we're highlighting comes courtesy of Bloomberg's Mark Gurman. And this dude is 89% accurate for like 400 plus rumors. And uh, there's a reason I am quite ecstatic about uh, this renaissance for the Mac that we're going through because I have not seen anything like this in computing. And yes, I did just say computing in my lifetime. Now I'm not that old, you know, don't, uh, don't take me out back and off me yet, but I've been, I've been around the block a few times and, uh, I've been doing this YouTube thing for like eight years now. So I've seen some, <laughs> I've seen some. So basically, if you've seen the M1 and you're like, you know what, I'm not convinced yet. It's just not there. Number one, that's expected because it's the very first version of the chip. And number two, let me just tell you what Apple's working on. So according to German, Apple's working on these two separate lines of chips. He says, quote, uh, the next two lines of Apple chips, end quote. So Apple is working on something other than just M1, M2, M3, M4. It sounds like they're working on either the M1 plus two other lines or just simply the evolution of M1 and then this other like X or Z variant line, which is incredibly exciting. Now, any of the things you've seen like spec wise for these, don't believe them. They're just like from fake Twitter accounts that put out information. But uh, what they're reporting here about the components of this chip are wild. Keep in mind, the M1 chip has four performance cores and four high efficiency cores right now. If we do the math, um, can we, can we run those numbers? It's tough. I know it's a big equation. So we're going to do four plus four or 16 divided by two or 30. You know, I'm not even going to fool myself trying to do math here. It's eight cores. There are eight core processors across the board. And the GPU component is seven or eight cores, depending on which MacBook Air you buy. And then it's eight cores and everything else. Apple is working on different variants of these chips with eight, 12 or 16 high performance cores. So these are four times the amount of high performance cores that we see in the M1 chips now. Four times, okay, all right, I'm getting heated up. Four times the performance of these chips than we have now. And this isn't even considering the high efficiency cores that will likely also be paired with these probably four to eight. And these are coming for the next MacBook Pro, new iMac models, just uh, for a little refresher, this is one of the concepts we've seen for the new iMac. Rumors say it's gonna be edge to edge, all screen, bezel-less. <laughs> and let me just tell you, I am just put it out there, Apple. Doesn't matter the price, just put it out there. 
there will be one in the studio faster than you can make them. Oh, but you know what? Maybe the 8, 12, or 16 cores of the other computers, the MacBook Pro and iMac, aren't enough. Uh, Apple's working on a 32 high-performance M chip variant for the next half-size Mac Pro. So the Mac Pro is gonna be getting the biggest jump in performance it's likely ever, ever seen in the high-end computer's history, yet it's gonna be about half the size that it currently is, which is, if you know anything about Computers generally, um, well, Apple's you know defunded this idea, but usually they have to get bigger to be more powerful. Not anymore. One of my biggest concerns, however, of course, has been the CPU is really, really good, but graphics have historically been trash on the Mac. Why can Macs not game? I mean, part of it is just because Apple gives like very minimal outreach, effort, input to actually trying to make gaming work on the map. I think the broader issue is that the graphics have been really expensive on the Mac and very underutilized and underpowered uh, because they're just ridiculous. Like, they just don't work. Like, I have tried to game on the Mac. So many people don't. I mean, this is gaming on the Mac is a whole other concept here. But, like, they've just historically been so weak and underperforming for what you're paying. This is one of the biggest and best reasons to buy a gaming PC because you can get the parts and the GPUs for way cheaper for more raw power. Now, software optimization, we're not even gonna get into that. That's a different argument, but GPU options have always been stronger on a PC. Also because you can just build your own PC and pick whatever GPU you want. But finally, and I've said this before, and I, I, I may be wrong, I have been wrong when I said Apple was gonna take gaming seriously, but they're working on 16 and 32 core GPU options, and that's, I mean, that's pretty significant. Like, this is not like the eight core integrated graphics. This sounds like it could be like an Apple G1, an Apple, uh, I don't know, N1, like a different series of chips here for just the GPU. And that gets me excited as somebody that is always doing video work. Graphics are important. And man, I... <laughs> I mean, just the ideas I'm having my head of rendering higher quality, 10 bit, 4K, 120 or 60 footage, 8K footage, 360 footage. I mean, like Apple obviously has to split from Intel all the way if they want to do this right. And man, it seems like the graphics are going to get really serious, like 16 and 32 core options for the GPU. We've never seen anything like that to my knowledge in mid-tier Macs before. I think we've seen it in like, you know, the Mac Pro or maybe even the iMac Pro. But this is gonna be crazy if it comes down to the consumer, you know, non-high-end pro-grade level. And then also, when are these coming? Like, I'm trying to get my hands on this. German says to expect some of these uh, in spring of 2021 and some of these in the fall. And we are expecting new versions of the MacBook Pro, a redesigned 14 inch version that will replace the 13 inch, a redesigned 16 inch version replacing the 16 inch, a redesigned iMac, a 24 and a 32 inch variant, getting larger screens because Apple's removing like the inch and a half thick bezels around the iMac. And then of course the half size redesigned Mac Pro. So after M1, Apple just threw it into the existing design. Next year is when we're starting to see the redesigns. German says the Mac Pro specifically, Apple's highest and most expensive computer could very easily be pushed back into 2022, depending on how development goes. Like these chips are not finalized yet and less ambitious versions of the eight, 16, 20 core chips could come. But I mean, if we're getting these as soon as spring, when does Apple usually release products? In March or April. We could be three months away from seeing the next step of M1, of the M series in general. Again, M2, M1X, MZ, and maybe even like one of the 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 G series processors, a, a significant dedicated graphics, not integrated, dedicated graphics from Apple. Like that doesn't even sound real coming out of my mouth. Dedicated graphics from Apple, what? And I would say to expect them in the order that they're listed. I would say Mac Pro is gonna hit in spring. I think we'll see the smaller iMac, the 24 inch version in March or April of 2021. And I think we will see the 27 inch redesign later in the year. I have no insider information at all. I just, I just have a feeling about this and I don't get that often. I just really think that the I think they're gonna update the small iMac before the big one because Apple has shown us that they like to ramp up into things rather than just giving it all to you with the best power all at once. And I would guess that the smaller 24 inch iMac will have a lower power chip 
than the much larger 32 inch iMac that's coming. And then the Mac Pro, I mean, what's there to say about that other than this computer? I mean, it goes up to 55,000 right now based on how you spec it, uh, or maybe even higher than that if you get like the Pro Display XDR and accessories. I mean, obviously it's exciting to speculate about price cuts to Macs finally, because if Apple's controlling this additional, very expensive part of a computer, then they also would have much greater control over the pricing and the manufacturing process. They're not buying from Intel, they're buying from themselves which involves no middle person here or broker. So, I mean, we've seen that Apple was not afraid to offer the MacBook Air for a thousand bucks with the M1 chip, which is just a crazy good price for this computer. I think it's the best thousand dollar computer you can buy right now. But of course we can't get too excited because if we know one thing about Apple, it's that um, just as much as they're not afraid to try new things, they're not afraid to sell expensive products. So I would say pretty much expect the same consistent prices that we're seeing right now. All right, I'm ready. I'm really ready for this. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed this one. Hit subscribe for more. Uh, thanks for watching. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. And uh, I mean, yeah, it's like six days till Christmas. That's wild. That's also exciting. See you guys later. Love you.